Morning Science 20s, we're going to do a triple lesson today on ionic compounds. It's all the same lesson. What I wanted to do was stretch it out so that it wasn't all at once. And so I'm going to go in segments, looking at binary ionic compounds, then polyatomic ionic compounds, then multivalent ionic compounds. This way, if you have to go back and review any of these, you can just watch a short video rather than watching a very long video. So reminder about ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are when we mix a metal and a non-metal, something from the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the periodic table. You know I prefer using the phrase cation, anion, positively charged ion, negatively charged ion, and that's how we're going to talk. If you take a look at the picture, these are bonded as a crystal lattice or as this shape. Again, this perfect example would be NaCl. We're alternating positive sodium with negative chlorine, positive sodium with negative chlorine. And remember, it's a three-dimensional shape. So let's look at how we would go about naming these guys. So we're going to start with naming binary ionic compounds, which means both substances we're going to look at are straight off the periodic table. And most importantly, the metal only has one possible charge. So I need you to open up your periodic table. And what I want you to do is for the first example, NaCl, put your finger on Na, put your finger on Cl. So take a second, put your finger on both those substances. What I want us to do every single time when naming something is put our fingers down. If we have a metal, something on the left side of the staircase line, we know we're dealing with an ionic compound. If we're dealing with an ionic compound, it is illegal to use prefixes. Zero prefixes are allowed to be used. So put your finger back on Na. How many possible charges does it have? One positive. Only one possible charge. Therefore, we're going to name it this way. So we're only going to look at those items right now that has only one possible charge. So when you see Na has one possible charge, all you're going to do is Name the cation, name the anion, and add an IDE ending. So let's take a look at our very first one here. And we're going to get our pen turned on. So sodium, we're going to just name it. Sodium. And Cl is just called chloride. And my pen does not seem to want to work. So I'm going to see if I can trick it into working. Chloride. OK, again, we're going to find Mg and F, put our fingers on it. Mg has only one possible charge. It's a two positive charge, but it's still only one possible. So we're going to name it, name it IDE. Magnesium chloride. And the last one, put your finger on Al and put your finger on O. Al is aluminum. Aluminum has only one possible charge. It's three positives. So we're just going to name it, name it IDE. Aluminum oxide. So the key to this is if it has only one possible charge, make sure that you name it metal, non-metal, IDE. Okay, I'm going to clear this screen. Let's flip to the next screen. And what I would like you to do is pause the video. And I would like you to try naming these five using the technique I just taught you. Then unpause the video and check your work. So magnesium has only one possible charge. We would call it, again, I've got to come down here and get the pen. And we went a page too far. Back a page. So we have magnesium oxide. 
found calcium. Calcium only has one charge, so we would call this calcium chloride. Look for Ag. Ag is silver. Silver only has one charge. Silver chloride. Looked for Li. Lithium has only one charge. Lithium chloride. And last but not least, looked for Be. Beryllium only has one charge, so we would call this beryllium phosphide. Beautiful. So you checked your work, hopefully you got five out of five. I'm going to clear this page. Now, you now know how to name going from symbols to what do we call it? What are the words? What I want to be able to do is we also have to be able to do the opposite, where I give you the name and you write it in formula form. Now, remember, one of the most important things of an ionic compound is it adds up to a net charge of zero. The cations positively charged and the anions negatively charged, they have to equal to each other so that they have no charge. So we have the rules up above. I'm going to do an example with you so we can do this. So again, we're going to find the sodium and the fluoride. And again, IDE ending means you're looking on the periodic table, so it's going to be fluorine. You're going to put your fingers on both. What is the charge on sodium? Sodium is positive one. What is the charge on fluorine? Fluorine is negative one. One positive, one negative. They're going to cancel each other out. So we're just going to write out one of each of these. Sodium is Na. Fluorine is F. And we don't have to put the ones because for ones we just leave it blank. Okay, let's try another one. And my pen died, so I'm going to try to cheat and see if I can get this to work again. Perfect. So potassium has a one positive charge. Nitride is nitrogen, so it's got a negative three charge. Negative three, positive one. Which one of these do I need more of? I need more potassium. So I'm going to add a, another potassium. Two positive, three negative, still not enough. So I'm going to add another potassium. So when I look at this, how many potassiums do I need? One, two, three. So we're going to write this as K3 and then N for nitrogen. So we needed one, two, three potassiums for every one nitrogen. Okay, let's do the next example. Zinc chloride. I'm going to put my finger on zinc. Zinc has a two positive charge. Chlorine has a negative one charge. Again, two to one. This does not balance. I need more chlorine. So I'm going to add a, another chlorine, which means when I go to write this, I have one zinc, but I have one, two chlorine. So Cl2. The last one we're going to do, aluminum has a positive three charge. Sulfur has a negative two charge. These do not balance. I need more sulfur. I'm now at negative four, positive three, so I'm going to need more aluminum. Positive six, I'm going to need more sulfur. When I take a look at this, I need one, two aluminums. I need one, two, three sulfurs. So Al2S3, one, two aluminums, three sulfurs. Looks good. Okay, let's clear the page. And, oh, didn't clear. Let's try clearing the page again. Oh, maybe I just didn't get over there. Okay, I would like you to pause the video and I would like you to try these five, then unpause the video to check your work. Okay, for aluminum, positive three. Chlorine is negative one. I'll need three of these to balance out. So this is going to be AlCl3. Sodium is positive one. 
I then is negative one. They're already balanced, so I just need one of each. Potassium is positive one. Sulfur is negative two, so I need another potassium. So I need one, two potassiums. Berlilium is positive two. Nitrogen is negative three, so I'm going to need another beryllium. That's positive four. Oh, I'm going to need another nitrogen, and I'm going to need another beryllium. So I need three beryllium's and two nitrogens. So this is going to be Be three and two. And last but not least, calcium is positive two. Fluorine is negative one, so I'm going to need two of those. C A F Two. Hopefully you found this video instructive. Please um, take the time to rewatch this if you need to.